It's time for yet another computer build. This one is going to center around what you see here. The uh, Asus Prime H310M-C. Now this board, and this entire build, is going to be used to replace the hardware that is getting really tired in my stream encoder computer over there. Which is why I chose this particular platform. Because this has the one PCI slot that I need. And the most important thing is that this particular board has Windows 7 drivers. So I don't have to reinstall Windows and reinstall drivers for anything and hope that it will work. Because it should work just fine. Unlike that, uh, what was it, the Q370 board with the 9700K. That was uh, one thing. I also got this CPU here. This is a Core i7-8700, not the K-SKU, so it uses less power. Should have a 65 watt TDP if I remember right. So, we're going to use some existing RAM. I didn't buy this for this project, it came out of another thing. I hope that it's going to actually work, given it's DDR4-3200. I don't know if this particular platform will actually support RAM that fast. And, even though this uh, CPU does come with a heatsink, uh, the Intel stock coolers are garbage, and I went ahead and I bought something super overkill, just because I wanted to try it out. This Be Quiet Shadow Rock LP low profile cooler. I actually bought it for another project, I don't remember what project it was, and then I never ended up using it for that. Premium. We'll give it a try. I actually put one of their bigger coolers on a system at work recently, and I liked it enough that We'll go ahead and we'll give that one a try. But I gotta get this board out so we can take a look at it. And uh, then we can get some of these peripherals hooked up. Alright, here is the board in its protective anti-static bag. Comes with this Asus Control Center for CSM motherboards. Not sure I'll ever actually use that, but I might. I haven't decided yet. There's the driver disk. Support Windows 10. But it does have Windows 7 drivers. If they're not on the disk, they're certainly on the website. So, and of course, it comes with the user's guide. IO Shield. I'll probably actually install this on the board, but this is the M.2. I'm not going to use an M.2 with this, but I would like to at least have it on the board, so that way if I do, because invariably at some point I will be converting this to M.2, and probably Windows 8.1. I do want to have that. I mentioned the I.O. plate, I believe. If not, there it is. Obviously it has an I.O. shield. It comes with red SATA cables. I actually was kind of surprised to see that they were red and not uh, and not the uh, the usual uh, black colored. And I'm, this is also kind of odd. I'm not really entirely sure why they made them that long of 90 degree. This one's even bent. In fact, I think they're both bent because they're just uber long. I may not even use them. I haven't decided yet. We'll have to see what kind of cables are in the existing system. Okay, I've pulled the board out of its protective thing and I've gone ahead and installed the RAM as well as the new CPU. There's the cooler. This tiny little thing is supposed to adequately cool that chip. Yeah, I don't think so. Unfortunately, I may be stuck with it because this is another one of those cases similar to the, I forget which one it was, I think it was the 11th gen build that I did recently. I'm not sure if this uh, cooler is actually going to clear this RAM. It's one of the problems with a low profile cooler. Should have seen that coming from a mile away, but I didn't. Oh well, I didn't buy it for this project anyway, so... Whatever. I guess if I had to put it into something else, I have to put it into something else. Okay, as you can quite clearly see, I gave up and put the Intel cooler on. As I suspected, the right way to install this, it wouldn't fit. And the other way, uh, number one, is I don't really have a screwdriver that's thin enough to fit the holes on this. Well, I do, but it's just kind of a pain. And I'm not sure it would have cleared this PCI Express slot right here. And I'm also not sure that it, well, actually I know for a fact that 
I wouldn't be able to use that chassis fan header that's right there, which I do kind of need to use. So that kind of puts the damper on that, now doesn't it? So just use the stock Intel cooler. Eventually I'll replace it with a better one, but that time is not right now. Uh, it's a brand new cooler. It should work just fine for this, hopefully. I guess we'll find out. I don't trust these Intel coolers, though. Either way, can have a look at the back now. See all the USB ports and the onboard serial port that this has. Pretty nice touch. We're actually probably ready for a power-up test because this does have the VGA on board. So let me go ahead and get a power supply and give this thing a try. Okay, I think I've got it all cabled up. We can go ahead and we can actually check the power usage once I plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in. Drawing one watt from the wall right now. I know it says three, it said two before. So let's go ahead and power it on. Make sure it works. There we go. Check it out. We have a power on self test. Core i7 8700, 3.2 gigahertz, 16384 megs of RAM. New CPU installed, press F1. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, there's the uh, boring standard Aptio setup utility. That's a very interesting year. I'm not really sure how that happened, but uh, it's not right. Yeah, that should be 2022. I'm not really sure how it got into the year 5,000 because it looks like that's not even a valid option. That's actually really funny. So I'm going to set this up to my liking and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Okay, we can't even read that text on this camera. That's impressive. But it looks like this system is limiting it to DDR4-2666, which is fine. That's still more than faster than what is in the existing system. So it might end up being that I get or put this RAM into something else, or get a set of 2666 chips to put on this one. Doesn't really need 16 gigs of RAM either. 16 is probably a bit much, but we might as well future-proof it. Um, leave it as is. Temperatures don't look too bad, all things considered. It's not roasting with that crappy cooler on it, so maybe it'll actually be fine. I don't know, we'll have to see once I get into that cramped space. Let's see if I can get it to boot into something here. Alright, real tech boot agent. See if we can get it to start like a live Linux or something. I recently updated the versions of Linux on the PXE server so we can actually see if these ISOs are any good. I find it funny, there's a brand new fan. It's already grinding. It's pretty sad. Looks like it works. There's some keyboard accessibility. Why is it doing that? <sighs> I 
works pretty well. 12 cores. I thought this was an 8 core 16 thread chip. I guess it's not. I guess it's 6 and 12. But that's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay. Here is the existing system. This is another one of those Q87M-E motherboards. I think this is the first one that I got. I did have one stick of RAM fail, I think last year. So it's only running with one module right now. So it'll be nice to upgrade all of this. I am going to change these two cables, because they're different. I don't like the way they look, so I'm going to just replace them both. So we'll take care of that. I've got to get these out. And I've got to hope that all the hardware will maybe not so much just work, but uh, hopefully it will be easy to straighten out. I'm going to move this fan here to the back because the fan header is the one fan header that the new board has is around here. I'm not sure why I don't have a rear case fan in this because it does have two fan headers, but oh well, whatever. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Okay. Uh, with the old and with the new. Even using the new cables, even though I really don't like them. They just don't scream reliable to me, but I'll use them anyway. They're matched, so that's good. Now i got to get all the cards installed. And to change this fan, uh, which I almost forgot about. This cable on this fan will actually reach to the fan header on the case. But I'm going to put it in the back of the case anyway, because I think that's a better place for it than the front. And I want it as an exhaust, not as an intake. So It would be nice to add a second fan to this. But unfortunately, there's just no space for that. So One fan it is. Okay, are we ready to watch this thing explode? Well, I'm not, but if it's going to do it, it might as well do it on video. Okay. We'll hit the power switch. And there it goes. 58 watts. Alright, in search of incredible. Now, is Windows going to boot? It will, except none of the drivers are loaded. Which is probably fine. So let me log in here. Okay, time for the rant. Which is hopefully going to be a little bit less sweary than it has been the last couple of times I've done this. We're going to get straight to the point here. You can see here in the list of hardware devices, we've got a number of unknown devices. Now, the Ethernet is obviously bad, we're not working, which is fine. Something that really takes trying is that the USB doesn't work, because I have this USB, actually I don't even have this USB attached now, so it was plugged in a second ago, or it was lighting up a second ago. I guess those front panel USB ports are completely dead. Okay, plug that mouse in, and now is when it'll show that I'm a liar. I have a light, and yet it does absolutely nothing at all. Okay, so the USB doesn't work. Fine, whatever. That can be solved by installing all the drivers. I'm pretty sure that universal serial bus controller is actually for the 3.0, but I guess maybe the 2.0 is tied to it. I don't understand, but whatever. Fair enough. I'm going to see if my... Uh, TV tuner is showing up. Nope, that's not showing up either. I don't know why, because it's right friggin' there. Okay, fine. So, get out of all this crap. Now, let's go to the driver disk. I want to run this installer. We hit yes. And we get this error message. Motherboard support CD does not support this operating system. Well, gee, Windows 7 X64 support was listed on the website for this motherboard. Right. Here is the ASUS support site for this piece of crap, H310M-C motherboard. Okay, we go to drivers, drivers and tools. We could see here 
Please select OS. Look, Windows 7, both 32 and 64-bit, but watch what happens when I click on it. I get nothing. Nothing at all. You click on Windows 10 and there's plenty of drivers, but those are obviously not going to work on Windows 7. It's a different kernel. So I don't know what liar designed this particular monstrous mess, but they lied. It's, it's a lie. It's a total lie. You know, and false advertising is what it is, really, quite frankly. So, you know what? I am just on principle alone taking that hardware back out of there and replacing it with the old stuff once again because that's just dumb. Like, I don't, I don't know what what somebody was doing, but they were not doing their job when they designed all of that. And I really don't understand what is so hard about a board having been released. I should probably look this up, but I'm pretty sure that this board was released before 2020, which means that Windows 7 was still well and truly supported when this platform came out. So why doesn't it support Windows 7? Why doesn't it support Windows 8, for that matter? What the hell happened to Windows 8 support? What is wrong with these people who designed this stuff? Windows 8 is supported for another year. Make drivers for it. I don't care that nobody uses it. I do. And that makes one person, which means somebody uses it. Brainiacs. How about you do your jobs properly? Good lord. And like, USB support. like. What USB chipset is this piece of crap using that doesn't work? I don't understand. This was a solved problem. I'm not going to put Windows 10 on this because Windows 10 is retarded. I'm going to use a real operating system that actually has proper support for the hardware that I'm using. I'm not sure if this capture card has Windows 10 support. I'm not taking that risk. So, out of all this crap comes, this thing is going to go back in there, I'm going to replace the heatsink, and we're going to call it a day. I'm going to do the rest of the upgrades I needed to do to this thing, and that's that. This is going to go somewhere else, or it might just sit on a shelf for a couple months, because this pisses me off. I bought this platform for the sole express reason that it listed Windows 7 support, which means I don't have to reinstall anything, which I don't want to do, because I've got a lot of customizations on this. But no! Because people can't do their bloody jobs, now we're stuck with this crap. me. Okay, we're done here. Okay, let's see if it still works. After doing all that. Well, you get a power on self-test. Starting Windows. And slowed down. Now we're ready to log in. Okay, well, we've determined there's audio input. There's also video input. If I go ahead and turn that off, you can see it disappears. So, everything seems to be okay. No ill effects. So, here's your failed upgrade video, which I may or may not upload anyway, but really one of the things I needed to do to this was to replace the audio cable because I had some issues with the audio cable linking the this, which is the final thing in the audio chain, to the computer, and that cable was going bad, so I just went in and replaced it, so that's, that's good, it, uh, hopefully will work a lot better than the existing piece of crap that was here before. So we'll see what we do with the other machine. Uh, I've got a four channel capture card around here somewhere I may experiment with. Maybe if I could get that other system working with Windows 10 and that other capture card then I'll replace it. Uh, it'll certainly be in a new case. It's not going to be in this case. We'll see. But for now that's it for this. Thanks for watching. You've got a comment. Feel free to leave it down below, as long as it's not a Windows 10 shill comment, because I really don't give a crap what anybody else thinks of Windows 10. 
I don't like it. I'm not going to run it on this right now because this thing's got a dedicated purpose and quite frankly the point of buying the new hardware was to not have to reinstall was to use the existing installation so the fact that I have to use Windows 10 is kind of garbage. <laughs>